So this week we're gonna be fixing some broken metal on this super expensive lawnmower. <laughs> How expensive? Um, well, they had $14,900 written on the side and that looks like it was written as like a used price. So some friends of mine own a place uh, in a town called Vice, which is Virginia Industrial Cleaning and Equipment. They sell high-end lawnmowers, tractors, bobcats. It's where I bought the lawnmower for my house, actually. Shout out to the Miglarises, who I went to high school with, and they own the place. And I got a call yesterday while I was homesick, not with Corona, to fix this. And I told them to wait till today. Essentially, this is a giant riding lawnmower. It's a Steiner, it's all hydrostatic, so it's all hydraulically powered. 34 horsepower, Kohler, looks like a V-twin gasoline engine. Controls are super simple. It's four wheel drive, there's eight wheels. It's pretty nuts. I imagine the extra wheels is for like mowing on a hill or something so you don't roll over. I think this is what they use on like uh, golf courses and I see road crews use these things. I've already taken the deck off, which wasn't that hard. It's got this cool hydraulic arm situation with some quick disconnects and I just had to pop a belt off and it comes off. But right here is what's broken. So there's a crack here and they've already ground the paint off, but there's a crack here, there's a crack here and underneath there's a giant crack. You can kind of see some of it there. It's cracked there and all the way through. So I think that cracked first because it's all rusty. And then because that cracked, it cracked these two up here. All right, <clears throat> so now we can get a better look at what's broken. These two big cracks and then underneath. That guy there, it's cracked all the way down. You can probably see it better now. Look at all the complicated pulleys involved in making all the blades spin. This thing has four blades underneath it. 68 inch cutting deck. I imagine these are pretty nice, uh, nice machines when they're working. So, okay, how do you fix cracks? If you've ever seen like a cracked window or a cracked windshield, you know that once the crack starts, it wants to keep going. And so what you need to do is find a way to stop it. So the first thing would, I would do is find where that crack ends. So it looks like it ends right around here. So what I would do is drill a hole right there. And what that does is it, it finalizes the crack and it's, it's a machined stop point. I don't know how else to describe it other than that. But that helps it from going any further. And of course, I'll fill that hole once I get to welding. And I'll do the same thing here. Drill a hole there. The other thing I need to do <clears throat> is take a die grinder or an angle grinder with a cutoff wheel and open these cracks up because if you think about it, if you look here, <clears throat> I left myself a nice valley here on the corner so that you can fill it with weld. If you have just a butt joint like this, the weld has nowhere to go. So you wanna open it up, create a little valley in here so that the weld actually gets some good penetration. And this is quarter inch steel. So you're not really gonna fix anything by just loading a, a puddle on top of it. You wanna make sure it gets some good penetration and obviously gonna have to melt all the paint off of it, clean the paint off of it, and then do the same thing down here, which isn't quite as easy to get to, but not the end of the world. That's the game plan. So not too hard, but it, to do it right, it is a bit time consuming. Oh, I just noticed another crack over here. Look at that. That's cracked off. Then there's one probably starting there. This thing gets raised and lowered a bunch. Um, you know, when you're done mowing and you need to drive over a curb or something, you need to pull the mowing deck up. And I bet you, I haven't tried it, but I bet you the controls are such that it's probably fairly easy to slam it back down. So I imagine that's probably what's happening is people pick it up and then they hit the float button or they push the down thing and it just goes wham. And so all that stress is focused right in here. And that's why it broke. Oh, sure did. Look, it's starting to crack right there too. Hmm. Um, all right, well, I'm gonna get stuck into this. I'm gonna work on it a few hours this afternoon and then finish it up in the morning. They need it, it's Thursday, Wednesday. Today Wednesday? They need, it, they need it back by Saturday. 
I'm so sweaty. <laughs> so now big crack is there all the way up under here and then we got this cr micro crack here and then there's one there in that weld there so that's eventually gonna crack all the way under here probably yikes so if anyone has experience with these Steiners I think they're called Drop a comment, let me know. You know, this is a good time to mention, I can't help but think of um, Rich from DeBoss Garage when I'm doing stuff like this. I love watching his videos about how to replace the clutch on a tractor or everything wrong with a 5.9 Cummins or, I think he's actually reviewed one of these, I don't know if it was a Steiner, but it was for a golf, it was for a golf course and it had the spiral cutters on it, but I think it was the center articulated cutter just like this, so. Go check that out if you want to learn more about these things. Rich is real good about doing more in-depth stuff. I'm just a welder and a fabricator. And Rich, if you're watching this by some crazy chance, uh, I wish I was closer because it looks like you could always use some fabrication help. Vince is pretty good, but I'd love to help you. Um, anyway, moving forward, gonna prep these the same way I prep these and uh, keep going. Okay, so I've got a clamp here to hold these pieces parallel because the part on the left was dropped. And so I'm gonna tap, put a weld in here, put a weld in here, and then put a weld in that corner. And then I'm gonna drop it down, fill in all the ones on the top. pretty happy with that so we got this guy filled in this guy filled in I had a stop and start there I might go back over that one and this guy filled in so all the cracks are filled so I think I'm done I think I'm done I could be done but um, kind of worried that this thing's gonna break again so I might either weld a second layer of metal underneath or a gusset in here second layer kind of makes sense but then again you know i don't know that they want to pay for all that so might be done skis let me think on it i'll come back on camera i think we're done here so i'm gonna hit it with a little bit of red get it off the table remount it to the mower and uh, hope she lasts Okay, so it's the next day. Just wanted to give a clean uh, conclusion to this little repair project. Here's what it looks like. Nice big weld there. These two I ground flat because they were less, um, less severe, I should say. But everything went back together real easy. Slid right back in where it was supposed to. Got the belt reattached. And uh, yeah, so this is one it's one serious machine here. I think we should be okay. I mean, it's it's as strong, I believe, as it was when it left the factory. So that's 
Ideally, it would be a little stronger than it was when it left the factory, but what can you do? So I think we should be good to go. I uh, just texted Greg over at Vice. He's uh, pleased with the turnaround time. Did this in a day, day and a half for him. Anyway, thanks for watching. And um, if you need anything welded, give me a call. I like repairs. Um, you know, an, an interesting side note is that in this current climate, with steel prices being what they are, I mean, more than double what they should be, it, it makes you think about maybe repairing something versus replacing it. And, um, you know, using scrap steel, salvage steel, cutting metal things apart to use the steel for other things. It's something I'm gonna be paying more attention to right now. And in general, you know, I come from a salvage background having been at Black Dog, so. Um, anytime you can reuse, repair versus replace, it's a good thing. So feel good, even though this was a fairly minor problem, all things considered, you know, just a few cracks, it feels good to have it back on the road or back on the lawn with um, no extra material required, just filler metal from the inside of my MIG welder. So there you go. Mission accomplished. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.